so you're going to be seeing him uh, in a few days. Right. Okay. So this is good timing that you're talking to me today, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you most want to know from me? How do I address, you know, I mean, I guess at this point I'm thinking I don't want to mention anything that's just ha happened. I want him to be the one to bring up, you know, what it is that, you know, he would want to talk about. I definitely want to work things out, but I don't want to be the one to initiate, hey, I want to work things out. What's been going on, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I guess going, you know, how to address that conversation or just wait to, to see what he says or how he starts the conversation. Okay. So for the listeners and certainly for you, I want to go back to what's going to be uh, most helpful for you to understand uh, in order for me to give you that answer of what you do from here on, okay? Okay. Because where you are now, um, it is a pivotal uh, moment for sure. And if you want to make things different than what has happened in the past, you have to be different. Right. Yeah, it makes sense, of course. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm going to get to all of that, go through what I believe was going through his mind and what happened, and then give you the answer to your question when we come right back. Have you met a man you think might be the one? If so, you're likely riding a high. It's fantastic to have finally found something that really fits and feels right. After all, you've endured in dating, the disappointments and the months or even years of being alone, not to mention the painful lost loves, it's wonderful to be able to take a breath and no longer have to wonder. But can you really relax? Well, if you're listening to me right now, have read my book, or watched me on YouTube, you likely know that relaxing in relationships and just letting things happen doesn't always end in you getting what it is that you desire and deserve. And it also doesn't get the man who loves you what he really wants and needs. Because men look to women to direct them in relationships. And men do best in marriage. That's right. Studies show that married men are much healthier and happier than their single counterparts. Men deeply desire the connectedness and purpose marriage provides them. But if you're not actively directing your relationship onto the right path, your Mr. Right could end up walking out of your life. Then both you and he have lost a lot possibly a lifetime of health and happiness. And it can happen so easily, so quickly. He pursues you and presents as all in for months. You know you're on track, and then for seemingly no reason, he starts to pull back. Then you become anxious, and, and then things go off the rails. If you're here, you know you've made mistakes in the past, some big, but some so small, you're baffled why things didn't work with a man who you know loved you. Why he just couldn't talk things out and work things out. But there is good news. If you now have someone, you can change the way you do things so that the end result changes. So that you get all that you desire and deserve and have no more disappointment and heartbreak. If you're here, you know that it's up to you to make a romantic relationship work and go the distance. That you need to be the mechanic of your relationship and set your GPS to the destiny you deserve and what will make you both happiest. If you're ready to make the little turns and tweaks that will be a game changer in your romantic life and commit to what works to get you everything you want with the man in your life, Wait no more. My GPS program, the Groom Positioning System, will get you on the right road and keep you there so that you reach your destiny. Go to coachpaulagrooms.com slash programs. 
to get all the details on the groom positioning system. There, you'll fill out a simple questionnaire, and in no time at all, you and I will be talking one-to-one about your unique situation. We'll have a full coaching session where I'll answer all your questions and give you all the particulars. We'll talk about your history and if your current situation is on track to meet your goal. Most importantly, I give you my honest, no-holds-barred assessment of your unique situation and my coaching on what to do right now to tweak things in your favor so you can have the complete commitment that ultimately makes both you and your man completely happy and fulfilled. Don't continue to delay doing something different. And please, don't kid yourself that because the man is different and things feel different this time around, that ultimately things will end differently because it's up to you. You need to do things differently to finally get what you desire and deserve. I have the simple, subtle, and value-based tweaks that put you on the path to commitment. And week by week, I help keep you on track to reach your divine right destination. Make a commitment to yourself to set your GPS in the right direction. So this time, your Mr. Right is yours for the journey and you finally reach the destination that is so rightfully yours. Go to coachpaulagrooms.com slash programs, fill out the questionnaire, and we'll be talking soon. So we're back with 40-year-old Hope, who was dating 32-year-old JP for about three months, and we just went through what had happened and how the breakup transpired, and Hope is going to be seeing JP in just a few days and wants to know where she goes from here, how she handles that meeting, etc. So it's a really good thing to discuss because this happens so frequently in relationships because here's what I can tell you, Hope. The feelings are there. They're mutually there. He feels much the same way you do. It's just the difference between male and female. Does that make sense? Yes. In order for me to give you an answer of where you go from here, it's very important for you to look back. And in the looking back, it is not to say, oh my gosh, could have, should have, would have. It's really to say, okay, I'm not going to make those same missteps next time and going forward. Because if I do, I'll get the same result. Right. And here's what I'm hearing just from the little bit that you just told me, as everyone knows, for the most part, I've never spoken. Have we ever spoken before? No. All right. So I didn't know the story, just heard it from your mouth for the first time. So the little bit that I know, what I'm hearing is very, very typical in that when a man is needing and wanting a relationship the way JP sounds like he was. He was in the state of being a buyer. He really wanted a relationship and you hit him very deeply. And when that happens, it will feel to the woman like the train is running rampant out of the station and there is no brakes or there are no brakes on the train. He's just moving full steam ahead. And that's what you got for like the first month and certainly before you had sex, correct? Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's extremely typical and normal for the man. We are the pace car in any relationship. We have to set the pace. Because in the beginning, he will go from zero to 60 in nine seconds and want everything because he's all about getting to the end, which is having sex. And he uh, is, you know, on a high in meeting someone that he thinks might be the one for him. And it sounds like he felt that. Now, that's great. But what happens for us as women is we take that to mean we can step in and have a relationship in a very reciprocal manner 
And what I mean by that is I'm hearing that you did a lot of reaching out to him, making it a real uh, connected and, um, for lack of a better word, symbiotic relationship whereby, you know, you were connecting with him, um, being very mm, open with him about what he should do in terms of texting, calling, etc. And Mm -hmm. that is a problem, unfortunately. And this is basically because he needs to make all the decisions and as the man and we need to be the receiver seeing what he's willing to do to make the relationship work and the very first time he pulled back you were shocked understandably so is that right Mm -hmm. yes definitely and so you were questioning what's going on. Right. That's very normal. Because you see, it, there's nothing that is more bothersome to us than that. It's confusing. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. what? <laughs> yes. And it provokes anxiety because what, he no longer feels the same way? That's the biggest question, right? Right. Exactly. And here's what we must know in instances like this. That this is a very typical um, like um, chart or graph, so to speak. So most graphs or charts you see, it go up and up and up and up, hits a peak, and then it goes down. And then it goes up again. Think of the, uh, I think it's, a, um, I don't know what it's called, but it monitors your heart and it goes beep. It goes up and down and up and down and up, and you see it, up and down and up and down. And that's what I mean in terms of a visual, that he's going to go up, 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 and then it's going to drop. And that drop will be fast. It will be furious at times, meaning that there will be no contact, and he goes into his quote-unquote man cave, and he's got to figure things out. However, if we, as women, keep questioning him about it, we don't do ourselves or the relationship any favor, and we actually give the relationship less of a chance of going the distance. Okay, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because men love through wonder and longing. Unfortunately, we love in a completely opposite way, and I hope this way of my putting it helps women understand this very foundational principle. It's why this podcast is called Make Him Wonder, because men love through wondering and longing. Women love through knowing. Right. So it's incumbent upon us to... Let them go through what they need to go through without asking. And then what happens is they come to, so to speak, and wonder like, oh, my God, did I mess it up? Did I completely destroy it? She's leaving me alone. She's not coming towards me. And then it puts them back in the mode of pursuit. Yeah. It was, um, he surprised me when he said he wanted to, he had been thinking about asking me out to dinner or like to on a date. I was like, oh, he's wondering. <laughs> yes, he is. However, here's what he knows now. He knows that you're all in. Okay. Mm-hmm. And... I know it may feel like, okay, at the moment, he's questioning whatever. Here's what occurred when you took him back the way you did. Okay. We're going to go back to Chinese New Year. Okay. You reached out to him. Mm. He didn't have to do anything. Okay, got it. (laughs) Yeah, yep. And I know you get it, and that's all that I have to say about that. 
and because he he didn't do anything and you reached out and then you didn't you didn't um allow for him to make amends for what he actually did that was not okay through your feelings okay. you wanted to immediately take him back you invite him to dinner you do all that and you have sex he didn't have to do a thing well yep yeah. so sure enough in short order it went exactly back to what it was for him it makes sense mm-hmm. yeah confused um he doesn't know if he wants to take on i understand you have a child yeah, I mean, my son, he's an adult already. He's hes a big boy. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but he has a child. Um, does he want more children? Um, for the most part, I mean, he's, I guess he's open about it from when, what he's mentioned. He, his daughter, she's, I think, 13. Um, he doesn't, I mean, I've told him that I, if, if it happens, it happens. If not, I'm okay with that. And he's like, yeah, me too. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay, great. So that's not an issue whereby, even though he's very young, that he wants to think about, you know, starting a family. So that's great that that's not seriously on the table. But there is something there, and I dare say it has nothing to do with you. Okay. Not one thing. And if you can get that, in such a huge way I can't even tell you and think that you are all that and a bag of chips and that it has absolutely not one ounce of anything to do with you you can make this go the distance coach Paula tell me what to do (laughs) (laughs) Uh Uh and I'm hearing that you're at a very good place to go the distance with this when you do it a bit differently and you're going to have to show up on saturday being different okay (laughs) Mm -hmm. being different you are lovely um i I hear yes you're very like i hear a sweetness (laughs) and you know any man would be lucky to be with you and you've got to make this man know that yes while you were curious and you wanted to see him you are not ready to just uh, waltz right back in and this is going to be shown to him not told Mm -hmm. shown remember one of the most important premises in my book is that we relate it's my one of my five gender gaps Women relate via verbalization. Men relate via action. Yes, I remember reading that. (laughs) What you do, not what you say. So, you have got to think of this as that relationship you had is over. So over. And you are not picking up where you left off on Saturday at all. If you don't, you will be right back to where you were and three strikes, you're out. That's how I feel too. So I totally get that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you have to show up in a completely different manner. A la when you first went out with him. Okay. Here's what he's going to expect. That you're going to have a long talk about the relationship and it's going to be just like it was on Chinese New Year. He's going to make you feel okay. Now, mind you, I don't even know if he is, and most men are not, if he is even consciously aware of what he's doing. In other words, I don't think he's a bad guy at all. I don't think he's meaning to manipulate you in any way, shape, or form. Okay? He's just being a guy. Mm -hmm. And you have to know that. If you think he's not a good guy, then you don't want to be with him, and it's not worth doing this work. Right. No, I, I I know he's a good, I know he's a good man. You know, it's just, I need to know, 
I got to play my cards right at this point. So, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it is a very, you've got to show him that game is over. We played that one. Mm-hmm. We are not playing that one anymore. And you don't do this with a heavy hand. You don't do it via verbalization. You do it as a, um, instead of a um, offensive game, so to speak, you play a defensive game. In other words, you let him do the work and you just respond to it. Okay. So... You're going to go to dinner. Is he picking you up? Or are you? How is that date going to transpire? So now that he has his new car, <laughs> he could pick me up in it. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically um, that's how it will be. He should okay. be picking me up around yeah, okay, Saturday evening. All right. So you're going to get picked up. You're going to go to. You're going to make small talk in the car. It's going to be all about the new car. Mm-hmm. You have to walk this very fine line of being. Um, You are not going to be like you were. In other words, if you were going out with a man for the first time, think of how you would handle yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. How you would be reacting. In other words, if you're going out for the first time, and say when the man picked you up, he started uh, trying to kiss you passionately, you wouldn't allow that. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh-huh. That's the same kind of thing. You see, you're showing no, 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 no. You're not, you're getting the wrong idea. This, we're not that anymore. We're going out on a date. You see, mm-hmm. and you don't Makes say sense. those things. You just, um, oh my goodness, I that's not. You know, I think we need to like take a few steps back here and just have dinner. Right. <laughs> Not that he probably will. I'm just giving you the flavor. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. Mm-hmm. So, he's going to be going into this expecting uh, Chinese New Year. Meaning you're going to go out on a nice date. He's going to, and you're going to get hot and heavy, and you're going to go have sex. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> exactly. And it should not, because if it does, you're right back to where you were, and you will get this um, same thing happen in short order. Right. So, what do you think will happen when you have a really nice night, you get in the car, he takes you home, what's going to happen? He's just going to drop me off at home, and thank you for the, you know, thank you, good night, you go home, and I go home. <laughs> That's it, separate homes. <laughs> no, I want to know more. What he's actually going to do, because I don't believe he's just going to say, oh, I had a lovely night, um, I'll call you. I See, I don't, I, I, I know it depends what I say, but I really don't expect, I don't think that he would expect um, for me to, invite him in or anything like that i mean why do you think that hope um because he knows he knows that i'm you know i've i've taken steps back you know i'm not as responsive as i used to be um doesn't matter no 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 you're kidding yourself hope nope okay No. (laughs) no you think that No, what did you show him? You reached out again. You sent the thing from church. You reached out again. He knows there's no other man in your life. Mm -hmm. You did that. And you responded immediately with going out. You did not show any ounce of pushback. You were the one that fostered it. Same thing. As with Chinese New Year, just different circumstances, a little bit longer. Uh, no, Mm-mm. he doesn't know anything of the sort. You're going to have to show him that night that you're different. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. You have to know yeah. you are the 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 prize here, and that you're no longer just giving away the goodies and 
You see, because you feel something and you know he feels something, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you're going on. The mutual feelings between you, which I have absolutely no doubt he has. That doesn't mean he can sit up and fly right. That All that means is he has the feelings for you. Right. This is what messes with our minds as women. Because when we feel, we act accordingly. Yeah. This is because relationships to us are natural outgrowths. Commitment is a natural outgrowth of feelings and love from us. It is not ever for a man. Wow. Commitment and a relationship are something a man decides on. It is not a natural outgrowth of anything. It's not a natural outgrowth of sex. It's not a natural outgrowth of love. It's not a natural outgrowth of years together. Ever. This is harsh. <laughs> right? Yeah. Harsh. So, it's incumbent then upon us to show that we know that. That's worthy opponent strategy. We know the quote-unquote game we're playing, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't mean it's a game. I'm using the worthy opponent as an analogy to you must be at the same level of play as another player in order for the, the, the actual um, game to unfold in a way that it's going to be fulfilling. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. So you're going to need to be that worthy opponent. And there's a lot of work here. And I say to everyone, you know, the work is always on us. We're the mechanics of the relationships. We're the mechanics of men. We know about relationships, about love, about all of it. We are the feeling creatures we are. And we have to guide the man to be making the decision he needs to make. And when he doesn't make the right decision or the right move, we must show, not tell, show how it's going to go. And so for okay. you, this is a first step and there's a lot to do here because it's going to get, it is confusing because it's so confusing to us whereby, okay, if you, if you feel such and such way, then why don't you take action accordingly, right? Right. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Especially because he knows, he knows without a doubt how you feel. And he knows it is going to go down pretty much like it did over uh, Chinese New Year. The best predictor of future outcomes is past history. Mm. That's what he yeah. feels he knows. And he feels like even if it doesn't happen uh, that night, meaning Saturday night, it's already a done deal. Okay. Mm hmm And okay. you have to show him. You are not bringing up anything. He has to wonder beyond wonder. And there's going to be lulls in the conversation. You're not going to do anything. You could sit back and kind of look at him, but you're not going to suggest anything at all. You're not going to talk. And he's going to be wandering up the wazoo, okay? <laughs> That's going to be fun. <laughs> yes, and make it fun. I like that you said that. Because you want to make it fun for yourself. Here's the thing that I believe more and more, the more I do this work, is that there's one thing above all that hurts women. I would say as, as big as any other thing, and that is a sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. In other words, I, and you guys have heard me say all the time, almost all the time, it's a marathon, not a sprint. What I mean by that 
is that if you show not one ounce of caring whether or not anything um, is understood on the state, anything is worked out, anything is talked about, anything at all, and that you are just going there for a nice dinner in the evening, you will do yourself a big favor. Now, there will be, everybody listening is going to have a feeling like, well, what is that going to do? That's going to show him that, you know, you're okay with all that he did. Here's what I can tell you about that. No. You are going to take 100% responsibility for the role that you played that allowed for him to be the way he was and what occurred. Because we don't know what would have happened had you broken it off in a way that is really um, definitive, um, black and white. Mm, I don't accept this kind of thing. I don't accept ghosting after the kind of relationship we had. And you show him that without wavering, and then he comes back on bended knee, you have a very different relationship, and you wouldn't be where you are right now. So what you're saying, I'm sorry, so explain that a little bit more. Um, had I broken off, broken it up with him and not resp- like never have uh, reached out to him again or anything, what, can you repeat that again? I'm sorry. Yes, you're on the right track. It must be with a man, definitive, that is it. There's no okay. do-overs. You did that to me. Think of how selfish, how unfeeling, how wrong it was for him to have done that. Right. But yet you went back wanting more. Now that you put it that way, it's like, really? Like, what am I doing? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. But it's because, and don't be hard on yourself about this, Hope, because A, we are the feeling creatures we are, and we don't understand. and, And there's a natural feeling of like, I did something, and I can just make it right. If we're just together, like you said, you said it. When we're together, it feels all wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. It's Uh amazing. It's it's like perfect. (laughs) Yeah. But it's what's happening when you're not there. Right. Exactly. Mm Mm-hmm. So it is by action. Now, I can tell you this. And I can tell any woman listening out there in any semblance of this kind of thing going on, whereby he showed you that kind of interest. And it doesn't sound like he's a, a player, you know, it sounds like he's like a good family guy. I don't know, but all things being equal, anyone listening who's in a situation like this, you make it black and white like that and you cut off everything with him he will be back he will be back and you will have a leg to stand on then wow Mm -hmm. yeah yep if he really wants you and it's not about another woman and when he's ready I can't, I always say to my clients, I can't tell you when, but I would take my last dollar, last dollar, and all of my money and bet on it. He will be back. Go and live your life now and know it, but do not be the one to reach out unless you have done something that needs to be forgiven, cheating, doing something really awful. He did the something awful. 
and you went back. You see? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, so the reason why, like, in my defense, <laughs> well, the reason why was because, you know, after taking that test, you know, your the consumer versus buyer test, mm-hmm. and I saw that from my, um, from what I thought I, I I thought he was a consumer. Uh, once I broke up with him and I, I read over your book, like kind of referenced it a little bit. I'm like, oh, he's a consumer. I, we, you know, it was kind of like I kind of wasted my time, whatever. But then I, of course, thinking of him, still thinking of him and missing him, you know, I was like, I'm like, you know what? Let me take the, the quiz online and let, let me just be sure. And then, no, it's just so happened. It said prospective buyer. I'm like, oh, my God. I was like, oh my God, did I, did I just mess this up by breaking up with him instead of like talking to him when he was ready, when he finally reached out three days later, even though I hated the fact that he ignored me for those three days, but should I, I have not, you know, um, broke it off instead given him the opportunity to communicate with me when he was finally ready to communicate. So but the way that I am, I'm short tempered at times. I'm just like, that's it. It's over. <laughs> and you know, that's why I was like, maybe I, I need to stop doing that. But then again, that's the reason why I'm like, you know what, let me, let me see what he has to say. And okay. Um, so let me, let's go with that a second, but you didn't just see what he had to say. You didn't meet at a, a, a public place. You didn't make him really, uh, Uh, talk about it and say I will never do that again that was wrong you jumped right back in you didn't vet him again for is he gonna do this to me put him through the paces you jumped right back in okay you see that's the difference yeah you know I call myself an 80 20 rules coach because yeah when you if you 80% of the time if you do what's right the 20% you don't is not going to much matter and and you see, some of that was just fine, meaning the reaching out was just fine, but you have to follow through and not just accept him back. Okay. You see? Mm-hmm. Now, again, you're reaching out yet again. Okay, but more time passed. Doesn't mean that he's in any different, just because he... Um, scores as a prospective buyer and you can take the test if you don't know what we're talking about at willhecommit.com that's the consumer versus buyer relationship test that yes he is a prospective buyer that's not a bona fide buyer he does he's close but yet you see the hot and cold behavior still right and prospective and buyer is between the mixed messages man, which you still get, and sometimes you got a bona fide buyer feeling. Right. What do you want, Hope, in your life? Do you want to be married? I do. I do. Well, if you want to marry this man, this is your shot. Now, when I say that, the work has to be done on your end and you have to become a high level mechanic here and you can okay. and you can take this depending upon what you do how you do it the pacing all of it you can make that happen but if you just accept him back now in any short order without huge change on his part you will get more of the same Because he hasn't fundamentally changed that. Because unless you hear on Saturday night, this month has been, here's where you would know. This month has been life-changing for me. I realized what a fool I was to have ever let you go. I am making a, you know, an oath here now. I will never do that again. I want to, you know, us to get back to where we were. Um... All of that. So say you heard that even in that fashion, you still got to do it because then it would be, I so appreciate that. I was hoping to hear something like that, but here's what happened to me in the past month. What happened to me was that I realized, you know, that 
I'm, I'm ready for real commitment. And I don't want to, to have to deal with what I, I felt and dealt with when um, you, you know, kind of ghosted me. I know it's not intrinsically you, and I gave you a pass on that. But without real commitment, I really know that's going to happen again. And I don't want that for myself. Do you hear how I didn't make him the bad guy? Right. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. I have made decisions. I am changing. You see? Mm Mm-hmm. I take ownership for myself and what's going on in my life. I am going to get commitment from a man. You see? Right. It's extremely profound. Now, you might think, well, that's going to scare him off. He's not ready for that. Okay, great. Because you want to let him go and think about it again. Miss you. Really delve into the feelings. Because if he's not, you're going to just get more of the same. It will just happen again and again and again. Yeah, and that's just a joke. (laughs) I can't let that happen. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not fair to you. It is going to just continue to happen. And again, he's consumers, ladies, are not bad men. Consumers are not bad men. Just like we are not bad when we as women love puppies but we're not ready to adopt one because of what's going on in our life or we just don't want one now. We just want to love on the ones we can see on the street. And occasionally, if one comes to our back door and it's astray, we give it a bath and love on it and sleep with it. (laughs) But we're not ready to be responsible to it and for it. Doesn't make us bad people. Oh, you're awful because you don't adopt. No. No, you're good because you say, if somebody came to you with the most wonderful puppy in the world, said, I know you love puppies, you want to adopt it, and you're not ready, you know you cannot come home and take care of it. You are not going to be good to it. You cannot do what it means. What you will do is say, no, it's the most cutest thing. You might cry, but you say you're going to need to give it to someone else. Go find it a good home. And that's what a good man does when he's not ready. If he really cares about you, it'll, it'll kill him to do it, but he will. Right. Mm-hmm. So I hope that answered your question. Yeah, now I, I, yeah, that's great advice for, for the upcoming dinner date that I have to be completely different at, which, yes, <laughs> I will be. Thank you. You must, you must show intrinsically, you don't say it, you must see, I have changed. I have changed. I'm not looking for you to change. I've changed. Either you're going to step up to the change I have manifested for myself and desire, or you're not. That's okay. It's not like I don't like you as a person. You see? I'm not making you the bad guy. I'm taking 100% responsibility. And then that's when it's going to get difficult from there. Because he is going to see something different, and he is going to want to get back. And that's going to be super hard, because your feelings are going to pull you, and like like a, a vacuum wanting to suck you right back in. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I know the, the feelings are mutual, it's, but like you said, it's the way that I, I act and respond going forward now. Mm-hmm. And that's what I help women do. That's what my program is all about, the one-to-one coaching talks about all of that we talk about it and do it on a week-to-week basis because the devil's in the details and many times you know and for all of us we can't see the forest for the trees it seems one way right i mean it seemed to you when you reached out over um and you must have been thrilled when you reached out over um um chinese new year and from the church link that mm-hmm. he responded in the way that he did, and you must be thrilled, like, oh, my gosh, great, you know, get to see him, 
and we have a shot here. Right? Right. Yeah. Can't see the forest for the trees because that's what it appears to be because he does love you as the pretty puppy you are. Absolutely. And he wants to get the, you know, wants to pet and get the licks. All of it. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Of course. And we have to be, we have to save ourselves. Right? Little puppies can't save themselves. We can. And that's where the yeah. work comes in. And and I'm happy to talk to you about that off the air. But I thank you for doing this today because I think it was such a great conversation. So many women, Hope, have been where you are, are where you are. And I hope this kind of conversation is very helpful to just even on an intellectual basis to kind of set things um, uh, in your mind on a different path. And to know that there are answers out there to to make something work with a Mr. Right. And I believe you can do this. Uh, definitely. I I believe so, too. And I thank you so much. For, I'm so happy to talk to you today. It was like perfect timing, like right before, you know, mm-hmm. with me seeing him. And and I, I just, oh, my God, thank you so much for the advice. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Oh, my God. You're welcome. And we'll, I'll say goodbye to you here. And again, we'll we'll uh, we'll talk again. So that was really great. Just so valuable for women who are in a situation like hopes. I love hope. Yes, you can have it uh, when you do things in a way whereby you're getting to the the the, the male brain in a way that will foster his deepest desire. And work on those three C's of men. Challenge. Competition. Not so much that. Uh, In other words, you don't want him to ever think that there's cheating going on in a relationship or there's other men or that kind of thing. That will never, almost never, I should say, help you in any situation. Because again, remember, we have to go back to Freud's Madonna whore dichotomy. We want him to always put you in the Madonna category, but it's the challenge of you at the right time with the right intention. And that's what we are going to hold space for hope to get. If you are in a situation like this and you want my help to navigate it, I work in 12 week programs my GPS program, the groom positioning system, is just the ticket for this type of getting back with someone and wanting it to go the distance. It's going to be how hope shows up on a week by week basis. And a lot of what she doesn't do with JP, the not reaching out, the showing him that she is different not telling him what to do or what she needs, just showing him what she will and won't accept (laughs) and how she feels about herself. That's really what it is. So I hope you enjoyed listening to this today. I enjoyed uh, talking with Hope and I hope I can talk to you. And if you'd like to talk to me on the podcast, there are several ways that you can be in touch simply by Uh, going to realcoachingconversations.com and filling out the possible guest questionnaire. You can also email my assistant, Michelle, two L's and an E at the end, Michelle at coachpaulagrooms.com. I uh, found out before we came on the air that Hope and I connected via Instagram. You can always uh, find out more about me there. And again, I just want to connect with you so that you get what it is that you desire and deserve in your life. Women are loving the world more now than ever. We need female energy in the world. I am talking to you in 2022, early 2022, and um, history is being made as we speak, and we need female love and energy in the world and that's what I'm all about so for any man in your life 
make sure that you are making him wonder. Till next time. I trust you got a lot of good information from today's video. And I enjoy bringing you content that is valuable for success in your romantic life. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the alert bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you want more on any of the content you see here, you can go to my book, Why Won't He Commit? How a Man Decides to Make You the One. You can order it at any fine retailer where you get your books. And if you want more on me or any of my programs, my podcast, go to coachpaulagrooms.com and we could be talking soon.